This 3D printed shoe, the Adidas 4D Fusio, might represent the future of all footwear, or it might just be another gimmick that has the appearance of space age technology with none of the substance. So we're gonna cut this thing in half and run it through our test to really see how they make a 3D printed midsole. Does it actually work? Is it worth $200? And are 3D printed shoes the future? And the story of this shoe starts in 2014 when Adidas launches Future Craft, which is an incubator to explore craftsmanship and new technologies through additive manufacturing. If you know what additive manufacturing is, it's crazy. So we'll, we'll cover that later in the video. But in 2016, Adidas makes their very first 3D printed performance shoe, the Futurecraft 3D Runner at a pretty steep price of $333. Then in 2017, Adidas partners with American 3D printing manufacturer Carbon and develops its 3D printing midsole using Carbon's proprietary digital light synthesis tech. And then on April 7th, 2017, Adidas Futurecraft 4D is announced the very first shoe made from digital light synthesis technology. And then from 2017 to 2021, there was a lot of variety of 3D printed shoes, including Pharrell Williams 4D, Ultra 4D, Futurecraft Strung 4D four wheel drive or 4D FWD. And then in 2021, the Adidas 4D Fusio is released. Then from 2021 to 2023, the 4D Fusio has built this unique little cult following of people who understand and appreciate how crazy the shoe really is and how space age the tech is to, to make that Midsole. So what are the specs on this shoe? Well, the brand is Adidas. The style is the 4D Fusio. They weigh one pound. They retail for $200. They're made in Vietnam and Adidas calls them futuristic shoes for the modern sneakerhead. And the way they position this is life moves quickly. I don't know if that's a reference to uh, Ferris Bueller's day off. It should be. Uh, but they say that we can't predict the future, but we can stride towards it confidently. Lace into these running inspired shoes and start the journey. Their digitally printed Adidas 4D midsole is precision crafted with light oxygen and liquid resin for control controlled energy return. An Adidas prime knit upper adds foot hugging comfort for the ride, the future is now. So pretty big claims and they've definitely positioned it towards the future and all these different things. But one really odd thing about this upper is this little skirt that goes around the entire shoe. It looks like it's somehow part of the structure, but I think really all it is, is it it's there to help prevent stuff from falling into the midsole. Like imagine if you didn't have this and your girl dropped an earring like back and it just fell right in your shoe or dirt got in there or rocks got in there, it would be a complete disaster. Cause you can just flip it up. So I'm pretty sure it's 0% structural and all about just preventing stuff from getting on the inside there. I don't know, finally come visit. But even the eyelets are pretty wacky cause you've got these regular eyelets and then you have these unique little TPU eyelets with a hard plastic reinforcement and they just don't look that sturdy. And so we did the lace pull test on them and the regular fabric eyelets took 123 pounds to pull through versus this TPU thing only took 42 pounds. So you might wanna be a little bit careful when pulling those on or if you're really tightened down your laces. Actually, let's just see if I can rip it right now and see what happens. See his toes get scared off screen. Yeah, they just, they're not durable. But they, like they said, it's a, it's a running inspired shoe, which is Nike's favorite go-to thing where they don't wanna say it's one thing, they say it's inspired by something. And then to the most interesting part of this shoe, the midsole, this 3D printed midsole. So how is this made? Well, like I said, they create this really unique lattice structure with a 3D printing process called digital light synthesis. And that's really different from regular 3D printing because if you don't know how regular 3D printing works, it's probably the one you're most familiar with where it starts with a flat bed, then a heated head, liquefies and extrudes material layer by layer, slowly building up the structure. It's like kind of squeezing like toothpaste or like the one that I, sticks in my head is the easy cheese. You put it on a cracker and you build up like a little honeycomb, same deal. But the issues with that kind of 3D printing is it can be weak because each layer cures individually and one at a time. It just takes one mistake in temperature, angle, gravity, and the whole thing is ruined. It doesn't have nearly as clean of a finish because all those individual layers. Compare that to the digital light synthesis. This stuff, it's a crazy method. It's, it seems like it's not real because inst instead of extruding the material, high intensity light is shot at a pool of liquid resin, which cures just the very top or bottom surface of that liquid in the design that you're you're creating. The really wild thing is each layer can be as small as 1 20th of a millimeter, if not smaller, compared to that big sloppy toothpaste or easy cheese extrusion of regular 3D printing, you get why it's so unique. And then the, the wildest thing of all of it is instead of it building up layer by layer like regular 3D printing, the object, object gets pulled out of that vat of liquid, which looks like just some kind of sci-fi alien being born, or the thing that came to my mind was uh, Baron Harkonnen from 
Dune emerging from that really gross, oily vat that he was healing in. That's what it looks like. If I didn't know it was real, I would not believe it. And so the benefit of that is you end up with a stronger, cleaner, and faster manufacturing. It only takes 20 minutes to make these midsoles, and it's easier prototyping. They said they tried five million different structures in the pattern until they got it just right, which I don't think they printed all five million. They probably just designed it to computer, but marketers like big numbers. And most importantly to Adidas is it's a significantly more efficient way of making this really complex three-dimensional structure. Because that's the wackiest thing to me, being involved in manufacturing and woodworking and every all that stuff my whole life. This is the thing that people will sleep on, I think more than anything with this shoe, is you could only do it with this style of 3D printing. Because if you tried it with molds, there's no way you get the molds to release and get those internal structures. If you see and seed it, there's no way you could get that bit to get into every single nook and cranny, especially on the internal bits. And the only other way I can think of doing this would be if you hand carved it with hand tools, because that's the only way I can I can see you could potentially get something in there. But even that, it'd probably take months and you'd have to have a ton of skilled laborers and it just makes zero sense. So to me, it really is kind of a modern material science miracle that, that you can buy this shoe for 200 bucks. And maybe the coolest thing about all of this is the unique ability to create different zones of densities and hardness and springiness and softness within the midsole itself. And you can see that they've done that because on the sidewall here, on the midfoot, you can see it's a little bit tighter lattice structure than on the forefoot and the heel, it's a lot bigger. And Adidas says that they designed this midsole based off the optimized data collected from athletes around the world, resulting in this really complex midsole lattice structure being stiffer in some areas, softer in others. And allegedly it's mechanically optimized so that it's not just like foam where it compresses in every direction Direction and springs back every direction, they've attempted to make it a directional rebound. So that when you load these, what are essentially little teeny springs, they're gonna spring you forward in the right direction. Is that true? I have no idea. And that's why we're gonna cut it in half and see if we can see anything on the inside. But before we test it, I wanted to see how it responded on our tests. So I wanted to compare this shoe to Ultra Boost Foam from Adidas and Nike Zoom X. So we did the ball drop first and the Ultra Boost bounced up 16.6 .6 inches, the Zoom X 17.9 inches, and the 4D a little bit disappointing at 12.5 inches. Then we did the bar drop test, the Ultra Boost did 9.8, the Zoom X did six, and the 4D revived a little bit of hope with the 6.75 inch bounce. So not quite what I was expecting from the space age tech. It doesn't seem like it's quite living up to even the more modern foams, but these tests are far from scientific. So you know, it's just to gather a little bit of data. And then the final test before we cut it in half, we wanted to see if stuff actually gets stuck on the inside of this midsole. So we ran this test and clearly it does. So you just gotta be a little bit careful with sticks and rocks. And it is a good thing that it has this little hood on the outside. So let's cut these things in half this way and this way so we can get a real look at this structure and see if it is actually different densities and how they've done it. And if it's just a look of 3D printing just on the outside and it's solid on the inside or if it is actually 3D printed all the way through. And if you didn't know, the reason I know so much about leather and can grade it and I've created this whole channel was because before this channel even started, I was doing leather working in college, started a little company and almost eight or nine years later, here we are still making those same style of products which include our hands stitch wallets. Most wallets use a sewing machine. That's why if you pop a stitch, the whole thing falls apart. They use really terrible leather. It's backed by fabric. That's why that, that falls apart. We use nice, thick American tan, vegetable tan leather, hand sewing it with a single needle, a single thread, two needles, exactly the way they used to sew saddles together to make those super strong. Because if you pop one of those stitches, the whole thing doesn't fall apart. We also make our micro adjust belts that, cause, that solve that one problem we all have of it. When you buy a belt, it fits you perfectly. It stretches out just a little bit. Now one hole's too tight, one's too loose. With our micro adjust belts, you can make a tiny adjustment to bridge that gap between the two holes to make your belt fit you perfectly. So check those products out via the link in my description. We make them by hand here in the shop out of the best leather in the entire world. So thank you guys for supporting this channel and our products. I'll put the links in the description.
All right, we got it cut in half both ways. And Toaster's finally happy being on screen. I've tried forcing him to be on screen. He never wants to. You can't force a cat to do anything. So yeah, if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing and let's see what's inside. So this turned out really, really interesting. I thought for sure it was a little bit of a, of a facade, but cutting it this way really shows you not just that these lattice structure go all the way through, but they are different densities. And I actually got it backwards because at the ball of the foot and the heel, it's a little bit more dense. And then everywhere else is a little bit softer, which makes sense because you're trying to deaden the blow of your heel and your forefoot. But I wasn't wrong necessarily about this edge here being a little bit tighter density because it clearly is. I think it's just there to help support your arch and prevent the shoe from rolling more than it should. So does this space age tech actually work? Well, to me, it's a, it's a really cool gimmick that pushes tech forward and it clearly does work but it has its drawbacks that we talked about throughout the video and it definitely didn't perform as well as some of the super foams in the responsiveness. But I still think it's tech that works and it is space age tech and it uses lasers to 3D print a midsole. But is it worth 200 bucks? Initially it seemed pretty steep, but at least you know you're getting that cutting edge tech and you're, there definitely is more manufacturing cost because if it takes 20 minutes to make this midsole, that's gotta be a hundred times slower than a regular foam midsole. So to me, I can see the cost being 200 bucks. Is it justified dollars per wear or squish underfoot? Not really. You know, it, it didn't perform any better than those other shoes, but what you're really paying for is that new technology. And then finally, is 3D printing shoes the future of footwear manufacturing? Well, I think eventually it will be, but not for a while and not because of the reasons that you would assume, which are performance and these rebounds and all these other things. I think it'll become popular because of its ability to custom make a pair perfectly fit to you. Imagine going into the Adidas store, scanning your feet and the way you walk, and then they print a shoe right in front of you that's perfectly made exactly for how you need it and how you walk in the shape of your foot. And more importantly, imagine cutting out all of these costs when it comes to shoe manufacturing, being produced in foreign countries, uh, being shipped overseas to the US, then being shipped to the individual stores, then those stores keeping a large inventory in hopes that people actually buy them. But more importantly to me, I think it's gonna be the end of this super obnoxious resale culture that hikes up the price of products for no reason other than this fake scarcity that's baked into them. And so if I think about going to the mall, they 3D print the exact shoe I want exactly for my foot, it's hard for me not to say that it's the future of footwear. So let me know what you guys think and what you thought of this shoe. This was a really fun one for me to do. I like doing this really wacky tech because it allows us an opportunity to explain some of the really cool things going on in the industry through the lens of these shoes. So thank you guys for watching and all the support and shout out to Toaster for being on screen for once in his life. So thank you guys, see ya.